This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. SQL Developer gives you a lot of options for loading and unloading data. You can do it on a table basis or a database basis. I'll start with the table level. If you right click on a table, you can see options for loading and unloading data. So I'm going to click on a table, right click, and you have load data and unload. I'm going to start with unload first. So what it does is it brings up the unload wizard and you choose exactly what you're going to do. So the top part up here is your DDL. Do you want to export your DDL? The DDL is the create table, create any indexes, create constraints, things like that. I'm not looking for a DDL right now, so I'm going to uncheck that. I am looking for data, so I want to say unload my data. And there are a lot of options for what you can choose to export. Comma separated values, the limited, fixed length, HTML, insert scripts, that's actually SQL inserts. You can do a SQL loader file, PDF, XML. I'm going to pick delimited, and you have some options to set your delimited. So the first row is the header row. I'm going to leave that. My delimiter, I'm going to choose pipe. The strings will be enclosed by double quotes, and I'm going to call this imps.txt, and I say next. And it gives me the option to restrict the columns that I pull. I want all my columns, or I could put a where clause to restrict the number of rows, and I want all my rows. So I say next. It gives me a little summary. My file is going to be created in my temp directory on my C drive. It's going to be called imps.txt. The connection is lewis at pe. That's my personal oracle. And then the table is going to be employees. So I say finish. Now I'll come out and open my imps.txt. Let me maximize that. You can see it's pipe delimited. It's got my first row is my columns, and then the rest is data, and it is pipe delimited. As I said, there are a lot of options that you can use to unload data. The other is the database unload. So if you go to Tools, Database Unload, click that, you get the unload wizard again. We don't want DDL, so we get rid of that. We do have to pick a connection because of the database level. I'm going to use Lewis at PE, same that I was using before. And then when we have the same kind of options, what do we want to see as the output? Do we want delimited? Do we want fixed? I'm going to pick HTML just so I can see my entire database as a HTML. And remember, this is going to be multiple schemas. I'm not picking one schema. Even though I have to have a connection, I'm picking a database unload. You can choose what you're going to unload in the next couple steps, but right now it's everything. I'm going to call this Oracle PE at HTM. Hit next. What do I want to unload? And I'm just going to go ahead and get everything. I'm not going to worry about unchecking anything. This is all the different options you can do in the database. Hit next. Here is where you can choose which things you want to load or unload. I'm just going to go ahead and choose everything. Actually, that might take a little while. So I'm just doing Lewis right here. Lewis doesn't have permissions to see other schemas. So I'm going to go ahead and get all those objects. The unload summary. We finish. And it takes just a second. I will come out. And this is the Lewis schema. You can see the various sets of data. If you want to search inside of a specific table, you can do that. I'm scrolling up and down. So if I wanted to see sales, I want to see Joe. So that's pretty much it for unloading data using SQL Developer. Now I'm going to switch back to SQL Developer and show you how you can load data. So I'm going to use my Joe schema, and I will load the employees table. So I click on employees. I right click. I'm going to do a load data. I get a dialog, which data do I want to load? And I'm going to use the same data that I used in the Apex demo from the PL SQL section. And it's actually a spreadsheet. So it looks at that and says, OK, here's the data that I see. It's got a header. It's going to skip no rows. The format is XLS. And you can preview a number of rows and set the limit for the preview here. I'll say Next. My method, you can create a script, or you can just go ahead and do the inserts. I'll just go ahead and do the inserts. How many rows do you want to load max? I've only got four rows, so I'll just let it go. Which columns do you want to do? I'm doing all the columns. 
Now in here, you have to match up your source data, which is in the spreadsheet, to your database. So these look right until we get down to home address and department. So it's looking at the keys, not just the column names, but what foreign keys do I have? So it says, well, I've got two foreign keys to the locations, and it doesn't know which is which. So home address, I don't see anything with home address, so it's loc. Department, I come in, I do have a department ID. So you have to make sure to map the columns to the correct items. So home address is going to loc ID, department is going to depth ID. So I hit next, it's my finish. It's gonna tell me what I have. I do a little verify. Some of the dates don't match or don't have a format mask. Go ahead and hit finish. So let's look and see if it loaded the data and it did load the data. And I've actually tested on this several times. Even though it said it didn't have a good mask, what it did is it truncated the time off. So all the times are zeros, but it went ahead and loaded the dates themselves. It was able to match up to that point. So the data is mostly there. And that's pretty much it for loading a table. It's very simple. As you saw, we had a lot of options for loading. You can choose comma separated, XLS. You can do text values, delimited files, things like that. You have to give it the same extension that is in here, and this is how it maps it. So if you have a delimited file that you call .txt, you have to call it .dsv, so it knows that it's a delimited separated values. And that's pretty much it for SQL Developer data loading and unloading.